Welcome back. This is officially episode 25. We did a rebroadcast last week, but this is episode 25 of Balancing Chaos with Kelly and Gretchen. And today we're going to be talking about the March for Our Lives. We're going to get into that in a minute because Kelly, of course, went if you followed us on Instagram. But what we're going to start is just a check in to see how things are going. So I have an update on the debt story Ooh. and the you need a budget stuff. Yeah. So first of all, I'm loving you need a budget and it's taking, I, I started with a three week trial, but I've already signed up to p- get the paid version when it ends. And it's taken me a while to figure out how to use it the way I want to use it. So a couple of things that I've done, if you're using it and trying it at home, is that I've edited the uh, categories to include the date that it gets paid for some of the big things or the month, like my car insurance comes out uh, like every three months. So I put the month in there and then like which which paycheck because the way you need a budget works is that you have to like put the money that you get immediately into categories. So it's not like I can say, well, I know I'm going to need X amount of dollars every month for my mortgage for the whole year because I don't have all that money yet. You have to just put the money that you have in different categories. So then I separated some of those into A and B. So like the first paycheck this is when these bills need to be budgeted for and the second paycheck of the month is when these need to go. Mm. So I did that by A and B. And so this is like a new thing that I've just figured out to make it work easier for me. So I wanted to share that. But my big win is that since we last recorded, uh, and you haven't even seen my dishwasher, I don't think. No, I saw pictures. My dishwasher died. And because I had my emergency fund from like the Dave Ramsey baby steps, keep your emergency fund, I was able to order a dishwasher, get it. Dave installed it and I'm loving my new dishwasher and it was very helpful to know that I wasn't having to, you know, pay interest on it or, you know, put it on a card or anything. I actually did use a card to pay for it because you can't shove dollar bills through the telephone during a snow day, but you can read off numbers. But then I just transferred the money right over and paid it off. So it was very nice to have that, that uh, flexibility and to not have to like sweat it too much to get that. So that was my update on did that. Did you get the twinkle? No, I couldn't find Twinkle. I got mine on Amazon. They used to have it in Portland. It is the hands down the best stainless steel um, cleaner. I got. I picked up some other kind that was available at Target that day because I didn't. I didn't have time to wait for Amazon. Yeah, it is a little expensive, but it lasts a long time. Like we bought our. I bought a bottle of Twink, a can of Twinkle when we first moved up here, and I just recently had to buy more. And I did try a whole bunch of other brands, but the Twinkle is by far the best it makes it look brand new it's i think it's 10 or 11 dollars a can but you know what another one is that's really good that's sort of that's related it's not for stainless but for windows what is the spray like the can spray window cleaner foaming window cleaner yes we have that it's awesome yeah i love it because it doesn't drip it doesn't when we did the storm i was taking pictures out of the kitchen window and i took the screen out and then of course i realized the screen was all the window was all gross from the cats and stuff and you just spray it on wipe it off it's perfect i love that stuff the twinkles like that it's that same kind of consistency so it mm-hmm. doesn't because we had tried a bunch of others when our twinkle ran out because i couldn't find it and amazon didn't have it at the time but you know it it's just like the the glass when you spray it on and then it drips and then the stainless steel had like the drip Ugh. stain so i that's why i love the twinkle yes this is my first stainless steel appliance which I'm very proud of her i bought at kelly's urging because i have white appliances and i like white appliances i'm not opposed to them but Kelly said I should really go for stainless if I'm going to be replacing appliances over the years that I should just do that. And honestly, I think I'm glad I did it because I think a new white appliance mm-hmm. would have highlighted how dingy my my white cabinets are because my cabinets are steel and they've been repainted and the paint gets kind of grungy because of the way it is their original 50s steel cabinets. So I think the white would have looked beautiful and gleaming and sparkling and made everything else around it look like shit. So well, I think I'm glad I went with something a little grayer (laughs) if you have if you have a good cleaner for stainless steel it always it your appliances will always look great but white appliances they really don't clean well over time because they're like they've got those little grooves in them and they get dingy unless you're really going to scrub the thing which you're not not me which the stainless steel with the twinkle it wipes just like a window yeah so we clean ours maybe once a week (laughs) (laughs) They dishwash their their light globes. So every time I come over, their lights are taken apart because they're running them through the dishwasher again. And I literally sent a picture of my light where you can see a bug through the shade. And I don't know when it died there, but it's been a while. And so 
we, yeah. we just have different standards. It's fine. <laughs> it's totally cool. Um, so what we want to talk about. So that, that was my update. Also, the Weight Watchers at Work started this week. And uh, so I haven't had my way in or anything, but I've been adjusting to the new system. And I think it'll be it's a totally new program mm-hmm. from the last time I did it, which it seems almost like a blend of Whole30 principles oh really which i which i did last summer yeah yeah. and i liked it okay it was decent enough but it was oh it's the cat i thought it was bird or something no and i liked it it was it was very restrictive but it was kind of like an interesting experiment and i couldn't do it all the time but this is almost like that restriction of the whole 30 with the flexibility of yes like i had my friend's birthday party and so i ate carrots all day basically and then had wine and cake Mm -hmm. but that's not how you're supposed to do it every day, but for that day, that's how I did it. Was you only have one fortieth birthday, so right. I celebrated it. So, are you not a lot? Is it? Are you supposed to restrict certain foods? You're not with Weight Watchers. You don't have to restrict anything. You just have to count it. So, the but the things that you can use that you don't have to count they have are the zero foods, and now it includes lean protein like um, boneless, skinless chicken breast, mm-hmm. boneless, skinless turkey breast, eggs are free because they're high protein all fruits and vegetables but not potatoes those are all free too so there's all these zero point foods so you can eat any fruits and vegetables you can eat turkey breast you can eat uh, eat chicken breast um salsa is free so like I've, instead of having cereal and milk for breakfast i've actually been doing scrambled eggs and spinach with some salsa on top and mm-hmm. things like that so it's just like adjusting your habits and so it just but i feel really, how many points can you have in a di- outside of all those things it depends on how much you need to lose. So, right. so I get like twenty five, and that's and, like what, including like bread and and that's so like that's like bread and so like a piece of like if I have one piece of bread with my breakfast, it's two points. Okay, and a glass of wine is five, and I know that very wow. well. Wow, but I've only had two wine nights because so you can only have twenty points a day. Twenty five. Twenty five. Wow. Okay, that is a really interesting. But you, but they also give you weekly points like so I get 32 weekly points so that you can use them like my mom's birthday is coming up this week so this is like we're hitting into birthday season so I can say well I can use some of my weekly points tonight to have because we're going out to dinner so I can look at the menu and figure out what I'm going to have or I can have a glass of wine with dinner and just take it out of my weekly is there any alcohol that's l- less than five points no, uh, I think gin and stuff like that, but I really wanted wine, so Ooh. whatever. All right. <laughs> so anyway, so I started that at work, and it'll be interesting to see how that goes. So I feel like I'm tracking everything now with the Weight Watchers and the um, and the you need a budget, and I'm writing everything down. It's all good. Cool. Well, it's that good. sounds good. So yeah, it, this was my fundamental issue with Weight Watchers way back in the day: is that it almost inc- it encouraged all the things I hate and disbelieve in in our corrupt food system, like. Hundred calorie packs and yeah, they're like trying to steer away from that. Food. They still, they still want to be like you know you can one of the one of the zero point things is fat free plain yogurt. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not, I don't eat much yogurt anyway. But I'm kind of like I would rather just count the points and have the fat or have the sugar because I don't like the artificial or not do it. Like instead mm-hmm. of diet coke, I drink polar seltzer, which is. Just right. just water. Right. It's not some seltzers have additives and stuff. This one doesn't. So there's still some of that, but it's not the hundred calorie packs. It's not you can just live off hundred calorie packs and probably lose weight but not gain health. Right. So, oh, that's interesting. So that's what so that's what's going on with me. Sounds really great. So Kelly, tell us about your weekend. Well, I just want people to know, and I know Gretchen knows this, but I have never been publicly political. I mean, I may say, we had at book club one night, someone in our book club said, you're you're political. And I think what I've learned from this whole gun revolution that's going on is that people misinterpret evidence and facts and research even and supporting those areas as a political position and it's not true. And that's, I think, a fundamental problem in our country. Um, so I'm not publicly political 
typically. And so to go to Washington, D.C., this was a big this is how mad I am. But (laughs) I was really stressed about it because a lot of people gave me anxiety about suggesting there was going to be it was going to be very unsafe. And what if there's a bombing or someone shoots up the crowd and then there are unsafe neighborhoods in D.C. So I hadn't really slept since I decided I was going to do it. In fact, I I never buy insurances for anything because I think it's all a scam. <laughs> you know, they always, they're trying to get you to buy right. $20, $40 insurance for everything. And I just think, what are the odds that this is going to... I mean, I've never had to use an insurance. And then when you do try to use one of those insurances, there's all these... Right. Preclusions. And then you mean like travel insurance or yes. extended warranties extended and stuff warranty, like that? Extended warranty, yeah. Not like health insurance or home insurance. No, correct. I've got, I've got all those. Insurance. <laughs> I already have all, all enough insurances. I'm talking about the little right. extra insurances. So when I went to buy the plane ticket, though, I did buy the insurance because I thought, oh, I might, depending on how this evolves, I may change my mind and just not go at all uh, be for safety reasons. But I went and... But I will say... I knew you were nervous. Oh, so Because on Friday, mer- m- Friday morning, you were texting. Yeah. And I, I don't was, even remember. Well, I was trying to like encourage you because you're like, oh, I'm kind of scared. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah. And I sent you, I don't know if you ever watched it because you were on the plane, but I sent you a link to a StoryCorps video. Did you ever watch it? No. But StoryCorps is this um, thing that NPR does and they have people tell stories to each other. And it was a StoryCorps and I'll, I'll share it, but it was a man being interviewed by his granddaughter about his participation in the march on Washington. Oh, I didn't I didn't watch when, it. Well, when when MLK spoke. Yeah. And so and he was saying, you know, one of the things that he said was people were really worried there might be violence. So I was a little nervous. Like it was like exactly. Yeah. So I had sent that to you. Like hoping that if you were getting real dark, you could watch that and just think someday you're going to tell your grandchildren they're going to oh. interview you about this. And you can be like, yeah, I was nervous. But then. Oh my gosh, I was so nervous. In fact, and so I'm terrified of flying. It's, but childbirth and flying are my two greatest fears. I hate flying. So I told my friend who is sh- flying with me, um, she she came to my house to pick me up, and I said, Shannon, I want to let you know, I'm terrified of flying, and my coping mechanism is to not talk about it. And she goes, Oh, I had no idea that you were afraid of flying. Um, wow. Okay. And so I said, So. So don't talk about it. When we're on the plane, I don't want you to talk about any aspect of flying. (laughs) She goes, okay. So we're on the plane and we're flying out and I was so anxious. I, you know, those rescue palette, remedy palettes, the anxiety, like the natural anxieties. I probably consumed an entire tin of those just on the way there. (laughs) I was popping them every minute. I have, it's, it's partial um, fear of heights and, and claustrophobia combined. So anyway, we were coming into DC and it was super windy. So it was the worst turbulence. And at one point, so we were, it, the turbulence was terrible. And at one point, we, we, um, gained air. Oh, yeah. Like out of our seats. And I went and <laughs> grabbed her hand. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. And she goes, Kelly, I'm trying not to talk about it, <laughs> but this is crazy. <laughs> so anyway, when we got off, we were so nauseous and everything, but. Anyway, we arrived. Well, Reagan is one of the hardest oh. um, airports to, to land a plane at. I can see that now. Because it's so like fenced in by the city and it's a really oh my gosh. narrow window. So, yeah. So anyway, we arrived. And then the other thing that I was nervous about is my other friend. I have a couple friends who are real safety paranoias. And I am too. I think this is why the gun issue has... Um, sparked me so much is because I am a safety paranoid. I mm-hmm. my husband at my house, I'm called the director of safety. <laughs> if I want to take all precautions to prevent an injury right. or a death or an accident, etc. So the other thing I was scared about is our neighborhood we were staying in. And I had already booked an Airbnb and canceled it because I was reading some of the comments and it made me feel uncomfortable. And then I emailed the owner and she said oh, you know, our neighborhood isn't fully gentrified, but we've lived here four years and feel safe, but I wouldn't walk around, recommend walking around at night. So I thought, all right, so I canceled it. And then I booked this other one. And then my other friend who lives in Virginia, who's safety super, she's probably more safety paranoid than me. She said, well, I'm a little concerned about where you're staying. Um, I want you to be really careful. I want you guys to always know where you are, etc." So I was all wound up about even when we were going to sleep. But we arrived and we were super close to everything, but in this really nice neighborhood in Catholic University. 
Our Airbnb was adorable. It's it's it was the nicest Airbnb I've stayed, and I use Airbnb a lot. Right. Um. It was so cute. Had a ton of character, and so we arrived at two that day, and we went uh we went to the Airbnb, dropped off our stuff, and then we went back into the city, and we did all the you know the Lincoln Monument, the Washington Monument, the Vietnam uh, Memorial, and we walked around the city, and there were all these people. There must have been three schools or three classes of students from a Southern school because they had Southern accents and they were from some Christian school and they all had great again hats on and oh, shirts. mega hats. Yes. And my friend Shannon, she goes, wow, heck of a time to be on a field trip in Washington, D.C. this weekend. <laughs> because, you know, these fi- school field trips are planned so far in advance. Oh, right. And this March was... So right. they were sh- completely shut out of the city all day Saturday, obviously. <laughs> so anyway, that was an interesting part. So anyway, then... On the morning of the march, we were really nervous about safety. Uh, so we had all these plans on how where we were. We had two different plans: one on if we got lost from each other, and then one on if there was an an, an accident right. or an issue. Um, we were going to have my friend from Virginia meet us, and we had this alternative plan. And oh my gosh! And I was really anxious getting on the metro and getting over there just because the reality of it started to set in um but the city had it so well organized and i guess we had met a lot of people who had been to the women's march and they said that it was clear that they had learned a lot from the women's march because i guess at the women's march you couldn't even get on the metro because they weren't running express every hour but Mm -hmm. they were for this so we got there no problem we met so many wonderful people it was so peaceful and we we got there around 9 30 and it started at noon. Um, so we went down kind of a side street. So you could, the stage was right around the corner from us, but we were right next to a big um, Megatron. Is that what those things are called? Jumbotron. Yeah, Jumbotron. Is it, I think Megatron's a, I think that's a Transformer. A Jumbotron. So <laughs> we were next to a Jumbotron. And in the beginning, we were right next to it, but we had to go to the bathroom. So we got pushed back. Should have taken your Imodium. Well, I, I didn't drink anything else after that. So we didn't drink any fluid because we were nervous about having to go to the bathroom again because where we were there were only three porta potties and there were thousands yeah, yeah. of people on our little strip um so anyway the march was the the uh, tons of teachers i mean teachers were coming out of the woodworks there were teachers everywhere honestly i know it was a youth protest but the majority of people we saw around us were adults or, or much older than us um all types uh there were well, it's a youth pro. I mean, it's a youth protest, but it was organized by youth. Right, and you can't just kind of send your eight year old. Okay, no. go march. I'll pick you up at. The no, but corner. I was I was expecting to see a lot more high school age kids. I guess, mm-hmm. um, but it was at least where in our area it wasn't the case. We did see some, but it wasn't the majority. Um, and we saw so many teachers. There were there were hunters, a lot of hunters, and they had like orange um, hunting, and they're like hunters for gun reform, um, and. Christians so and they were very clear which is sad again that they're like Christians for gun reform like as if you can't be both right you know so anyway like hunters that's it yeah, yeah. It's, it's it was, so anyway that was really great and everyone was so wonderful and so my favorite parts of the thing so have you you probably followed the media on this um well so I was doing the the stuff up here so I followed some of it um I so I wanted to say two things yeah I went with Girl Scouts to D.C. last summer, as you know. Yep. And I saw the MAGA hats, too. But, and I told you this, but I, I began to see it as almost like when you go to Disney World and everyone's wearing Mickey ears. Like, it almost just looks like a caricature. And it's like, okay, if you want to wear that hat, then, like, I don't even understand it. And the second one is, when you were looking at the memorials, did you get see the um, FDR memorial, the Roosevelt memorial? No. Oh my god, that was like my favorite one. And I almost texted you to be like, make sure you go to this one, but I think it's on the other side from where you were going. But that was my favorite memorial we toured it because it was all about social justice and taking care of everyone and from the New Deal and all that kind of stuff. It's probably my oh. favorite. It was beautiful and it like went through like all the stages of his life and it's it was it's my was absolutely I mean I you know like the classics are great memorials but the one that really got to my heart when we went was the FDR memorial I wish we would have went but what actually happened with that is we didn't think we were going to have that much time we in our head and when you're looking on MapQuest everything seems like it's going to take so much longer it didn't it was really quick to get to where we needed to be but what ended up happening is was we were all dressed for 50 degree weather 
And I think it did say it was 41 degrees, but the wind. Oh, yeah. So all I don't like being cold. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so it all of a sudden, the sun went down, and I... W- I was done. I was like, we guys, we gotta, I, we, we have to get out of here right now. I'm freezing because I only have my little, I didn't bring my L.O. Bean right. long. I didn't, of I was, course. I wasn't dressed for it and I was just so miserable. So, but we did, the Lincoln uh, Monument was r- really fascinating and he, so we were looking him up and so he was a member of the Whig. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what they believe, but I was like, you know what? Maybe we just need a new party. Maybe that's <laughs> what we need is just a new party because there's so many preconceived notions about every party mostly liberals, that are not, that are false. I was like, maybe what we need is just everyone to go toward a new party. And a lot of the, um, so the Parkland history teacher was at the march and he had a shirt that said, I want to join the political party that the Parkland students just started. Whatever political party the Parkland students just started. I was like, you know what? We used to have these odd other parties. Like, maybe that's what we need. Maybe that's exactly what we need. (laughs) So, okay, so just briefly, my favorite parts were, first of all, the one thing I'll agree with Fox News on is this event was so well done. I mean, this was one of the best events I have ever, I'd say the best. It was not only a concert, but beautiful polished speeches everyone and i kept thinking how are they going to do it because i've really been following these parkland students um i've watched i've recorded or watched online as many of the interviews as i can and i just thought what else are they going to say right they've said it all you know especially this big crowd but man did they did not disappoint this the speeches they and they they clearly planned out like which part each one was going to take and they also included all aspects of gun violence. There was a whole one mo- that was mostly just about suicide and how, you know, the issues we have with guns related to suicide risk. Um, one, and then the Chicago, mm-hmm. the situation in Chicago, and then racism. So they had quite a few, um, they had these little, so there was this little black girl. Her name was Naomi Wadler, 11 years old. She was the second speaker. She came out. She said, I'm Naomi Wadler, and I'm here representing all the black girls whose um, names don't make it to the newspaper. And then, she, well, first she goes, I organized a walkout at my school. <laughs> it was oh. so, and she was so poised and polished, and she just really talked about um, r- racism and gun violence. Did, did you see the girl who threw up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I was like, that would be me, but I was, I loved her for it because it was so real. Oh my gosh. That, so she, I had seen her on a CNN interview almost right after she had been dismissed, uh, discharged from the hospital. And so she has shrapnel in her face. She was in one of the classrooms where people died and were shot. Right. Like a lot, the rest of the kids weren't the ones mm-hmm. who've been like that, you know, uh, mostly outspoken about it. Um, so she was going and her poem is beautiful that she wrote and she just she coughed once and then (laughs) and the crowd no one really knew what to do because it was so like every mother wants to run a kleenex up oh here you go honey so she got back up and she said i just vomited on international television it was great and she finished and it was really great it was a great poem too where Um, where were you standing for all of this like what was your location do you know so like we could see if if I probably moved 15 feet to my left, you could see the stage. Mm-hmm. But we were back, like, on a side street because... You don't know, like, what building you were near uh, anything? I don't. Maybe someone else that I was with okay. would know. I was right... To the left of us was a... Um, a, a museum, tree. a museum. Oh, a pe- museum that people were standing on top of. I know. I was in DC. <laughs> if I could see a picture, I'd show you. Well, I just wondered because... We- We could have been closer to the actual stage, but it would have been more difficult to see what was actually happening. So we decided to have a better view and move off to the side street. Like I said, we were the first people on. um, We're right in the front of that jumbotron. So, okay, so that was the little girl was the best. The one of my favorites. And then, of course, Martin Luther King Jr.'s granddaughter, Mm -hmm. which was so sweet and really surprising. Um there was a student whose brother died at Sandy Hook and he spoke. And I mean, I was crying most of the time because these speeches were just right from the heart. And then Sandy Hook um, has a group of activists 
Um, Sandy Hook Promise. Sandy Hook Promise. We talked about it with right. Sarah Karen. Um, they have a student-led one, too, within the school. Mm-hmm. And they so they all spoke and represented Sandy Hook. And they said that when this happened at Sandy Hook, Columbine sent them a banner of love. So they presented a banner of love to um, Parkland. And I was just like, this is so screwed up. Because it's like a sports banner. I mean, I obviously, I'm, I think it's the sweetest thing. But I'm like, this is what we've come to now. But it shouldn't exist. Right, that's what I mean. It was like, we shouldn't have been interviewing Sarah about right. her experience. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, here's a banner for your, that you have now are with us in a school shooting. But anyway, so that was a moment that I, um, that meant a lot to me. And then uh, this guy, he was a twin. And his brother is Zyre Kelly. And he was shot in the head on his way home from a... Um, after school program in Chicago and that speech was just heartbreaking um and there's that one and then there's so many singers um but it was really funny because there were all these singers and they were really great and then but the only one so a bunch of students were how many of them did you know before you went well I knew Jennifer Hudson okay um I knew I knew Ariana Grande was a singer (laughs) I didn't know this is an her. ongoing joke with right. oh, Kelly yeah. and her pop culture references. But I felt better because I, me, so Shira, Shannon, and I, they didn't know them either because they were kind of like of the younger demographic. But I guess it was some Hamilton singers. Lynn Manuel Miranda, who wrote Hamilton. Yes. And actually, so you said, asked if I was following. So I was helping out here and I'll tell what how it went here. But when I got home, because ours was at 10, I was home before all this stuff happened oh, in D.C. Oh, that's great. But one of my co-workers who listens uh, started posting on Friday on Facebook and, or Instagram. She posted her backpack and she loves to travel and she is uh, she's divorced and so she has her kids every other weekend. She never kids this weekend. So she posted her one backpack. So I was like, oh, she's going somewhere because it's her weekend. The kids are with their dad. And then she posted another picture of numbers and I looked at it and I'm like, that's not at first I thought it was like elevator buttons. I was like, no, that's not elevator buttons. That's train platforms or track platforms so I was like you're you're in South Station you're in Boston and she was like yep so then I because I should be a private investigator you in my sh- next life uh well could you she <clears throat> tracked down I didn't tell her my flight or anything <laughs> when I landed I had a picture of me of like the flight tracker of my flight midway through and then I had a picture of my actual airplane from Bangor in my text that was our other friend who happened to like see the picture and I because I had I had posted like she's on her way to our text thread and she was working over in that office so she leaned out her window and took out managed to get a picture of the airplane which I thought was awesome oh my gosh so anyway so so she posted and so like okay so she has to be in South Station which is in Boston and it's she's she, the center one is 24 or 25 so then i started looking up like what buses leave from 24 and 25 and i found that it was a mega bus that goes overnight to dc and i'm like <laughs> you are going to the march aren't you and she was like yep so she left work and from here to boston is four hours oh my god i don't even know how long it is from boston to dc but she took mega it's bus 12 it, it's a long time yeah took an overnight bus went to the march participated in the march went back to the bus station Got on a bus that night, did the overnight bus back to Boston, took oh the morning bus gosh. up to ba- up to Bangor, and took did a nice along? hot all by herself, and took a hot shower and a nice long nap, and was still kind of exhausted yesterday, but it was awesome because she was doing Facebook Live stuff, so she would Facebook Live How did Lynn she Manuel do it? Miranda How? on her phone because we, our, we didn't have any cell service. I don't know. She she had some. She was near the. I think she said she was near the museum, which is the news museum. But she huh. so she did uh, took video of that, and she did video of a couple other speeches. So when she started doing those little bits, was after I was home from our march, and I was watching it, and I was so I was it was like oh, Lin Manuel Miranda, yeah. this is awesome, and I was like I wonder if Kelly knows who Lin Manuel Miranda no. is. <laughs> I didn't, but Shannon, my friend, was freaking out. She's like, I can't wait to tell everyone that I had the blah blah and Lynn Manuel Miranda, the Hamilton guys. She she's like, This is the close I'll ever get to close I'll ever get to Hamilton. And they yeah. were really good too. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was it was it was awesome. But yeah, our our cell phone was completely shut down. I didn't have service from I think it went down around eleven and I didn't come back until four. Her experience, and I'm paraphrasing, so if she's listening, 
I hope I'm saying it right, but she said she didn't even realize how many people there were until she saw the media pictures after. And she saw, like, towards the end, she saw, like, like National Guard. There were, like, National Guard troops yeah. there. She's like, wow, that's a lot of people for this. And then she realized later just how many people were there because she because she was by herself. She kind of had done the same thing and had her own, like, safety plan. And right. a strategy just in case because you have to do that. But she was impressed by how big it was, and she was she was really glad she went. Maybe we were just in a much more congregated area, because I mean there were <clears throat> right. I mean you saw the picture I got. We did a cheerleading stunt. Yes. So I could yes. get the depth. I mean, what you, stunt was it? Were you just on her shoulders? We, or? No, we did a um. Oh shoot, what do you call it? When like you, a pyramid? When you both when you step on their legs? Oh yeah, uh, that's a mini one. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, we just did that. It was really basic. But I got an awesome picture. And you could see. I mean, yes. you couldn't see. There were people all the way back. And that, this was just a side street we were on. Yeah. So anyway. So so here's the thing. I kept wondering when Emma Gonzalez was going to come out. Because obviously I knew she was going to say something. And the the whole time I was wondering, what on earth is she going to say? And man, I kind of feel bad for her because of the amount of pressure that's on her. Because she just did that powerful, game-changing speech after Parkland. And she is like now a public figure. And here she's going to come out on stage in international news. And what is she going to say to beat that? I was like, I don't know. And she's, you know, 17 years old. Right. And, you know, there's a lot of emotion going into this. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Wow. She did not disappoint. She came out and she did that speech. I don't know if you watched it. Yeah. And it was so amazing. I mean, to stand up there with a however many people you want to say are there, because now there's like a big debate about how many people were actually there. There were more people there than I've ever seen in my entire life congregated in one area. Right. And you know that news outlets were recording that from all over the globe. To stand in silence for five minutes ish and not make a facial, the wrong move or breath while everyone's staring at you, that is an incredibly difficult thing to do. And oh, yeah. she killed it. And then, you know, she said, what, then she, after her silence, um, she said, you know, about this, since the time I've been out here, six minutes, 20 seconds, the shooter sees shooting. He'll st- he will abandon his rifle, blend in with students as they escape, and walk free for an hour before arrest. Fight for your lives before it's someone else's job. And I thought, wow. And then she walked off stage. I mean, she wasn't even up there that She was the shortest speech of all. Mm-hmm. And that statement, <clears throat> fight for your lives before it's someone else's job, is what this whole fight has become about. Because all these people who don't want to do anything, people like us have to fight for them because they the problem is they really think it can't happen to them Mm -hmm. they really think it because if they thought there was a chance that their kid was going to get shot down at school with an ar-15 they would be doing something right they wouldn't just be sitting here fighting against it they wouldn't i'm sorry unless you're a cold heartless human being you wouldn't be like yeah you know what i don't think we should do anything they they think it can't happen to them so anyway so that was awesome okay so here's where it gets good (laughs) so I am just elated. I'm on cloud nine. I'm feeling like these students have inspired me to be a better person. They've helped me to stop being so scared of what people might say or think of you or whatever, because they're getting attacked. They're getting death threats for doing the right thing after Mm -hmm. they just watched their friends get shot down, murdered, dead at school. And here they are changing the world. This is what we teach kids to do. Right. Right. So we're feeling great. We're like, the city is beautiful. It's so well organized. We're talking about moving there, (laughs) making a difference, changing the world. We are like on a 10. So we go back to our Airbnb. We meet some priests along the way from Catholic University. We're at the March. And that was funny. And that was really fun. So we go back. We make dinner at the apartment, at their Airbnb. And then Shira says, why don't we just go for one beer? You know, we're here. It's 5.30. Yeah. There's this cute pub they told us about, the priests. So we were like, okay. So we walked to the pub. It was really cute. It has these um, congregate seating. So big, long tables where you just like sit next to people you don't know, basically. So we walk in. We still... So we had these shirts that had the outline of Maine that say enough. So we still have full March gear on. We think we're in a bubble. 
<laughs> and they, Shira and Shannon sit down and I went to the bathroom. So when I came back, I have pretty good intuition. So I go to sit next to Shannon. Well, the guy sitting across from Shannon, he's an older gentleman and he has on a Catholic University rugby shirt. And I don't know what about that triggered me because we just met a whole group of Park uh, Catholic University people who were at the march with us. But something about him spelled trouble. So I was like, okay, I don't want to sit here. Because yeah. I was, you know, when you sit across from someone, you're yeah. like more in their view. So I went around the table and sat on the other side of Shira. So that would put a seat between him and Shira. And I get to that seat and Shira goes, oh, you can't sit there. Because um, there's a woman with this group that just went to the bathroom. You have to sit here. So I end up sitting right next to the guy. So I was like, okay, whatever. So we get our beer. We take one sip. The guy looks at Shannon and goes, what does enough mean? And I thought, oh, here we go. Because A, he either has been living under a rock and really doesn't know. Or B, we're about to go to war. <laughs> so Shannon's all calm. And we're still very happy. Shannon goes, oh, we just, we went to the gun march today. And he turns it on. And he's like, and what exactly do you all think is the answer to gun reform? And I said, well, this is what we want what we are for. We're for expanding background checks. We're for um, red flag laws and we're for banning assaults, assault ri- ref- rifles to start. And he looks back at Shannon and he goes, taking away everyone's guns isn't going to solve the problem. And I said... Didn't say that. I said, did I just say that we were going to take away everyone's guns? <clears throat> and, he, and he goes, well, what are you going to do about knives? <laughs> Like, was it was like central casting that he's just coming in and being like, I'm going to do all the excuses at once. Right. So <laughs> here's the thing. I've been in. It's I've, a mental health issue. Right. So <laughs> I've been feeling like ready to take this on with anybody because I think, OK, if you're not going to educate people on it, then how are we ever going to fix it? And we know that clearly we're uneducated as a country on all these issues because we just something you hear something on Fox News or where or whatever news and you just believe it. But it's not necessarily even accurate which should be a crime in itself so but i had never heard the knife comment before so he really threw me off and i said excuse me and he said more people die in this country from being stabbed by a knife than they do from a gun and i go really and he goes yes (laughs) so tell me what you're going to do about that and and then he goes and why aren't you all in chicago that's where we really have a problem. And I said, we actually, Chicago is well represented today. The march is in Washington, D.C., because this is where the capital is. <laughs> and uh, the Ch- we care about Chicago. We are all for Chicago, too. So then he says to me, look at you. You're so hostile. <laughs> He's like, as soon as someone disagrees with you, that's how you people are. You just get hostile. I said, it's not that you're disagreeing with me, sir. It's that you're being patronizing and condescending. That's why I'm getting hostile. And so then I decided I couldn't talk to him anymore because I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get into an argument. My blood. And I don't know what it was about it because this wasn't even that extreme. The things he was saying to me. I mean, I've been. Well, you hadn't had anything to drink for six hours. That's it. <laughs> and we were just living in a bubble where we didn't think we forgot right. we forgot the reality of the world he was an example of he probably went out and million. was like I'm gonna find a protester yeah. and that's what he did he was like oh there's one right there mm-hmm. yep I'm gonna go say all my knife stuff well he was <laughs> with his wife and his 21 year old son who kept chiming in the son he was and then I had even told Shira and Shannon on the way over I've done all this research crazy research come at me i was like yeah i'm like i'm ready for anything except when they go into the guns right i get i i flounder like the details on the different types of guns I'm like oh my gosh i don't know guns okay yeah. excuse me i don't know them i don't know them all i know oh so after he said the thing about the knife my response was i know for a fact what i know about knives is that they can't kill 17 people in six minutes 40 seconds 
so I think that debate's over and he's like no it's not over I was like okay so I decided I had to stop talking to him because my blood it felt like it was 200 degrees I thought my head was gonna (laughs) pop off I was so angry and it just came it just washed over me when he said I was being hostile I was yeah I really was so I was like don't look at him don't talk just don't talk don't look at him so I'm just looking at he's sitting right next to me so Shannon has to take over so Shannon's so funny so she's calm about it she's like listen and oh they want oh they want then they go into they want to arm the teachers and his son has like pulled out pictures of guns and oh my gosh so they want to arm the teachers and Shannon's like look I'm a high school art teacher I make thirty thousand dollars a year I don't have time to deal with this I don't I shouldn't have to deal with being shot at school and she goes you know my principal gave me to deal with this problem a bucket of golf balls and construction paper And the, Wait, what's the construction paper for? To, to block out her window so oh, people can't see it. It was like a paper cut attack. Yeah. So, and she's like, we have an active threat at my high school. And she's like, do you think I should have to deal with this? And the guy's like, no, that's terrible. And she's like, okay, so I want to ban, I support banning guns that can kill 17 people in six seconds. So then he, the son whips out his phone and goes, well this is a glogger like I don't know guns so I'm just making it up (laughs) and he's like all you have to do is paint this black and you have a military style weapon and Shannon goes she Shannon takes a look at it and she's like yeah I have that gun (laughs) and they so then they were like what she goes I own six guns my husband owns six guns so then the guy the dad said well you're not a democrat then you're a moderate and my friend Shannon (laughs) is a raging liberal so of course this is what so then she had been calm the whole time handling it really well so then this triggers her she's like i am not a moderate i am a socialist (laughs) so so she starts listing off all these things she wants and she's like and i want universal health care and i want equality for all and then the guy's like oh universal health care let's talk about that and so then by this point i was like yeah I will debate you to the ground about health care because I am not a raging liberal. But the thing is, I am conservative. You don't understand what the reality of our health care situation is. But Shannon's like, you know what? I came here. We had a, I had a great day with my friends. I'm here to spend time with my friends. I don't want to talk to you anymore. And so he's like, OK, fine. So we go back over here. Meanwhile, he is still sitting next to me. So he turns to his wife and he goes, that's the problem with liberals. You push them. And then they just say, I don't want to talk about it anymore. (laughs) So I am like, oh, all right, Kelly, get it together. Get it together. You're going to get it together. So Shannon looks at me and I and by this time we had had our first beer and we were only going to have one beer. I mean, that really was the plan. And Shannon's like, we get another beer. I guess we're going to have to. So (laughs) so then I get back into the discussion with them. Like, because they were still talking about us and we we're sitting right there. So I said, so finally, I was able to get some common ground with the people. The problem with society right now is that no one looks into anything. These people, these people who are willing to aggressively fight strangers on an issue they clearly know nothing about, thought and believed we already had red flag laws. <laughs> they had no idea. So they were like, well, they should have gone and seized the guns. I was like, they can't legally. We don't have those laws. We do not have those laws. And the wife's like, huh, you're kidding. I'm like, no. (laughs) Oh, that wife is probably one who votes whatever her husband tells her to. Oh, that's what Shannon said, too. So I was like, listen, I think if we really got down to it and and you didn't label me as a, because I went to a march on gun safety, which is a public health issue, as a Democrat, which I'm not, by the way. My friend clearly is. I'm not. I said, if you just stopped labeling people and actually looked into facts i bet you'd realize that we all pretty much want the same thing and they were like oh wow no red flag you can't take guns away i was like no you can't we only have five states that have that you cannot do it legally so that's a problem i said i want that law implemented like yesterday and i said expanded background checks what's your issue on expanded background checks and they're like i don't look 96 percent of the population wants an expanded background check this isn't yeah that's not revolutionary and then I was like the assault weapon ban I said okay I can see how that's controversial because there's been some fat checks on like if it actually works or not mm-hmm. but regardless I think we can all agree on the red flag law yeah and so anyway 
I don't know. We got into a couple other debates. Other overall, it was going really well, and so we kind of like migrated off back into our own conversation. So I started looking up something on my phone, and Shira is a peacemaker. <laughs> so I think Shira was the whole time was just like, okay, please let me get Kelly and Shannon out of here without a brawl. So she sees me searching something on my phone, and then she sees me moving over to the guy, and she's like, "What are you doing?" I go, "Shira, I have to." I have to. So I slide my phone over to him and I, get, I found on Statistica the stats for Knives, which is what started this whole thing. So he's talking to his family like everything's fine. We like come to our agreement and I go right over to him and I put it right next to him. And then I just come back over here to Shannon and he is staring at my phone like he doesn't even know what to say. So what I found is that actually, because I hadn't looked into this, you know, but you know what? Challenge me. I'll look into any challenge yeah. you want on this issue. So what I found is that handguns were responsible for 7,105 deaths. Firearms, not the type not stated, were 3,077. But knives or cutting instruments, 1,604. I don't even know where he got that. And even keep looking down. Like there's yeah. other guns. Personal weapons, other weapons not stated. Rifles, shotguns, guns, narcotics, which was... Uh, the smallest amount but that that's complicated too what do you say oh my gosh so this was the this was the best part of the whole thing so he goes huh and then he looks at me he's like okay wow and so he slides back over then he's trying to search for other statistics and i don't know breitbart had an article that said because i'd already seen it on there when i was looking right. for my own stat that said like four times more people die of knife violence which you just use your brain for a second and think about that especially if the knife is being shot out of a gun right i mean come if you call on. a bullet a knife it counts right so i was like <laughs> oh i hope he shows me that breitbart article because then i'll give him an education on how to find evidence and what quality evidence means etc but he didn't so he tries to find it for like a couple minutes and then he looks at his son and he's like hey do you have vodka at your house <laughs> <laughs> and his son's like, yeah. He goes, all right, let's go. And he got up and he's like, nice to meet you, ladies. Have a good night. And somewhere in there, Shannon goes, what do you do for work? And oh, he, God. he owned a, um, you could tell that they were, they had some cash because the wife had a very big diamond on. And they were just like, you yeah. could just tell. Um, but so I guess he owns a medical device company and he lives in Manhattan. Anyway, I didn't let him push me around, Gretchen. Way to go, Dr. Strutt. Did you tell him that you have a PhD? I should have. Oh, no. At one point, he said something like, oh, now we're going to talk science. I was like, well, we're a scientist. So, yes, we are going to talk science. I said, I'm a scientist. So we are going to talk science. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was so funny. It was. So we were so rattled about it. The rest, so I didn't sleep. The three of us, we didn't sleep all night after that. We were just so wound up because it really he was just an example of the country that someone would be that brazen, a stranger to fight statistics with strangers, not knowing their backgrounds at all. I mean, right. we were, he was sitting with a PhD prepared nurse who studies, researches, and teaches public health. Right. This is a public health crisis, a domestic violence prosecutor, and a high school teacher. Right. All of which are very much affected by this issue. But he didn't even care. Yeah. He didn't, and, he, and he was just going to argue his supposed facts. And then get mad at us when we had a counter argument and call us hostile. But that he is an example of millions, and that's the problem. Yeah, and that he would he would tell me that On more the other people hand, died by died by knife. Yeah. On the other hand, there was one of him, and there was a million of you in the true city right then. So that's, I know. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. So my experience was that I worked at this march, which is much smaller, but I did peacekeeping. Yep. And I had an orange vest, and I posted pictures too. But. Uh, we walked with the crowd. So first of all, the local police said, you have to stay on the sidewalks because Facebook shows there's only 50 people coming. And we were like, well, we think there's going to be more than 50 people, but okay. And like, I didn't talk to them, but the, one of the representatives did. Well, they said, no, you can't have the streets. You have to stay on the sidewalks because there's only, you only have 50 people listed. We we're like, okay. Uh -huh. And I think it was over 400 that actually came. Yeah. So we had to stay on the sidewalks and then we had two people set up to sweep at the back and then we had two leading and then there were people on the rest of us kind of were asked to march on the sides and just keep an eye out. So I ended up behind a guy carrying what I thought was a toy AR-15. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, 
who's this dick like walking like because he's just very casually walking kept it down pointed down at his at his leg and we had talked at the peacekeeper training about like the different things that would cause us to like be alarmed and one was like like anyone who is a responsible gun owner knows you never ever ever pointed at a human not even as a joke never ever right um so you know he never did that but he was just kind of casually walking and i'm like what the hell so a couple of the peacekeepers and i like sort of signal each other and they were like yeah pd knows he's here and they actually like were leapfrogging us as we walked and always someone was always like right next to him and thus me you know going up and so we got up to the church where the speakers were going to be and he stayed across the street and there was there's a really dramatic picture that a, a photographer posted of him like standing there you know man spreading with his big gun and like smug look on his face and what well, so he was an anti-protester yeah he with was his just, ar-15 yes oh my gosh this is so sad and was just standing there like uh, like all just like haha I have my gun and and the picture that was posted you don't see there was a police officer then standing right next to him across the street he never went across the street never went in the church he didn't do any of that but it was still like and then at the it was only at the end of everything that I found out that it was a real gun and I was like you were such a why would you do that but he, he's it's a small town I've heard so I know we, who it so is we, now and we do have that um law here because this is the other thing that we're open carry you can carry okay because the state laws are so complicated um this is why we were talking the three of us that we really do need federal legislation because if you the current federal guard laws are basically non-existent there's like no laws basically right exactly uh, federally and every state is different which Which is why chicago is a problem yes because of the neighboring states exactly Chicago, like in illinois has great gun laws but because everyone around them is this swiss cheese law book it doesn't work out yeah. so anyway so when we got up to the church so the the side thing was is that when this happened um kelly was like we gotta go to dc and i'm like i can't go to dc that day because it was one of my well amy who was on our holiday show yeah it was her 40th birthday and it was a surprise party that hadn't been in, in planned for weeks yeah before the march was ever announced I'm like i can't go but i will participate so i did my part here and i'm glad that i was here there needed to be people here yeah. and it, but it was also so it was weird because it was also i didn't really listen to a lot of the speakers because that's where her friends from boston and um connecticut found her and surprised her so there was sort of like this celebrate like for me personally there was this like celebratory piece to it because yeah. we we're celebrating her birthday and that was the surprise and then we said oh by the way you have a party night at 6 30 you know where to go and that, so like it was like I was sort of distracted by my friend's birthday, but I was still there and I wasn't distracted. It was peacekeeping because I didn't happen until after, but just kind of watching. But the I I shared a picture and I was like, who would have thought on episode <laughs> one that the, we would find ourselves that Kelly was marching on Washington and Gretchen was in a church. <laughs> And I just thought it was so oh, ironic that's that so that's how funny. it ended up. So where is so it's Hammond Street Congregational Church? Yeah. So they offered to participate. They they let their they, they let us have their space. They did ask that we uh, no signs could go in. That's why the, that's why there was a big pile of signs yeah, outside. Yeah, I saw that. They asked that we not take signs in. Um, and then they and then we kind of like provided sort of security. There was one like kind of there was one guy who kind of wandered in who didn't have anything to do with the march. He was just sort of one of like a downtown character who wanted to learn how to ring a church bell, and we stopped him from doing that. So it was like he was the le- he was totally not threatening compared to the guy standing across the street with the rifle, hmm. just to stand across the street with a rifle. So I think the one, the reason why the Bangor march didn't have as much turnout is because it wasn't that well advertised. It was it was put it was organized late and plus there had been all the work with the walkouts and they were so close together you know what it wasn't that though what was it there were there were events there was one in Orno there was one in Belfast oh okay they were all they, it was so dispersed throughout the state whereas like the okay. Women's March Bangor was it for like, there was like a Portland Augusta Bangor and that oh, was okay. it okay okay so like there was one in Eastport there were all these little mini marches that were happening so that's why ours oh, wasn't okay. as huge as the Women's March but I think if you looked I'd be interested to see what the numbers were for all of Maine okay that day and how it compared because there are a lot of people my favorite sign so that was so that guy was the was the biggest jerk and the one that I loved is that this and because I was peacekeeping they were like kind of watch out so there was when we first got there, there was a guy in a MAGA hat with a video camera and a tripod, and he was on a scooter, like a hover around thing. So I was like, I wasn't really threatened by him, but he was obviously going to record liberals and try to catch them in lies or something. I right. don't know. Um, so he was there. And then there was this other guy that kind of walked into the crowd, and he was a tall, older guy, big beard, 
hat with some military insignia on it and like a snowmobile type jacket like a Mainer, you know? Yeah. And so that one kind of caught my eye. And so I kind of looked over and then he unrolls his sign. And it's this big orange sign and the most simple stencil, like you get it, the Rite Aid stencils, you know, with the lines. And it says, uh, I hunt no AR-15. And his hat was a Marine hat. So he was a Marine. I think even when you retire, you're still a Marine in the service. So he's yeah. a Marine with this. And his wife was there who looked very sort of prim and proper. And he just stood there silently, held his sign, went through the march. And I was like, yes, this. amen. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and that's how the hunters in my family feel. And yeah, that's, yeah, you know, like, like there's got to be a middle ground here. This is bullshit. Right. And he was this no bullshit guy. And so he but he was the one because I'm like, all right, you know, like I'm not worried about the I'm not worried about the girl with 2000, you know, braids and four <laughs> skirts. She's, she's not she's here because she's with you know the peace movement i'm not worried about her (laughs) but when this kind of guy that just doesn't look like somebody you'd expect at a peace rally basically showed up i was like hmm better keep my eye on him and he was great it was fine he was there for us and it was that was my favorite sign yeah i did not take the kids because i was working and so i couldn't like manage that so they didn't go um but there were kids there and we kept an eye out for them um we had in the peacekeeping team, there were people who were there were a couple of nurses and nurse practitioners who had volunteered and they were sort of our like if there's any problems, they're our medical team. And it was really interesting to be on the inside of the organization of it. One of the criticisms about the D.C. one is like kids didn't organize this. And it's like, well, no, right. they, of course they didn't organize it. Kids don't know where to get a jumbotron and how to close parking in D.C. Right. Well, they're not even allowed. I mean, they can't. You can't right. shut down a street in D.C. as a 17. You can't rent a car yeah. till you're 25. You can't probably rent a jumbotron till you're 25, too. So you definitely need to have help but the whole idea of giving them hell because oh you didn't really do this people helped you well of course they did but people helped them because they had a message that they had to share right and if it if it wasn't for their message that they were trying to share it would never have happened so i thought it was amazing i've watched some of the speeches online since i've watched Mm -hmm. emma's i watched um naomi's Mm -hmm. and i thought it was great and i am hopeful that this is that this is just a I feel like there's these surges it's almost like the incoming tide like the tide comes in and then it recedes a little bit and then it comes in a little more and recedes a little bit and I like to think that we're it's a rising tide right now well I saw a lot of signs with tides that said blue wave coming to a town near you a lot of people had that sign which I thought was funny and you know what quite frankly the other day on Facebook I was so mad because I am offended right now by the anti-gun reformers and their rhetoric and labeling people like me mm-hmm. as um, brainwashed liberals. I'm like, no, this is not even a, po- this shouldn't even be a political discussion. This is a public health issue. This is a public health issue. And right. I, you're not going to, there was a, there was a Fox News. So there was a Fox News was um, covering the march and they had all these people on there saying that it's brainwashed liberals um, capitalizing on students and emotions and all this. I seriously wanted to share that on my Facebook and say I'm going to go down to town hall tomorrow and I'm going to change my status to Democrat. I'm going to do that because I can vote in the primaries. Yes. I've I've always been independent. I've voted in every election. Me too. I'm going to too. And part of me just I want to be on the numbers. I'm so mad. I'm so mad that that's their argument. They're and my, my cousin did it to me today. She posted something that said basically that the march is such a hypocrisy because um they were people with guns who were making us all safe while we were there as we were marching to ban guns, which not one person has said one time, which is so annoying, and that we are just brainwashed elitists. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is disgusting. So I seriously, part of me is just like, you know what, fine. If this is what, if this is what, if that's what it's going to take, then yeah. I don't even want any part of your party because that's hor- That's that's mean. That's yeah. just like horrible. I, I mean, I've always been independent, but I want to register just to, I, like, it doesn't really change anything. I, I think I want to vote in the primaries this year, but I also want to just be a statistic somewhere yeah. that says, wow, all of a sudden these pissed off moms are turning into Democrats. Right. Yep, we yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I don't care. I know. And I was telling people, too, I was like, these pe- <clears throat> people who cr- accuse me of this, I voted for LePage. Yeah. I voted for Susan Collins and I voted for pa- Bruce Welliquin. Okay. So... But fine, if this is how it's going to be, if I won't. If the election were held today, who of those people would you vote for? Nobody. None of them. Not one. Yeah. And I think that that's the case for a lot of people. No, so. I don't, not at all. So anyway. Okay. Favorite things. So let's do our favorite things. So you want to go first? Okay. So my favorite thing is from the march, 
the singer Audra Day and the song is Rise Up and I've been just listening to it nonstop ever since the march because it's super it's just makes me feel like I was there it's motivating to me it I think it's just such a great symbolism for what the students are doing and this is what I teach people to do this is like my teaching philosophy is to teach younger generations to stand up and make changes and that's what these students are doing yet they're getting attacked by other by pe- I don't think anyone should be attacking them right and it really bothers me so this I just think the song is so positive and I'm just I'm obsessed with it awesome so yeah. mine's gonna be my dishwasher oh, I just got a new yes. dishwasher. so I um the dishwasher was basically the one that came with the house there's a whole story but it's a very basic model dishwasher that I had and it finally died and I wasn't sad to see it die but the dishwasher I placed it with is a Bosch, which was at the recommendation of my brother-in-law plumber and my parents and my sister and like everybody I know who's like done a dishwasher in the last five years and did it after doing all the reviews like I like to do has done a Bosch. So that's what I did. And the one thing that I'm finding about it is that I feel like it holds so much more because I keep thinking we need to run the dishwasher, but there's still like a ton of room mm-hmm. to put stuff. So I'm finding that a little uh, like uh, not off putting, but just a little unsettling. Like, wait, there's still it's still not full because it holds seems to hold so much more. And it has like the third rack so mm-hmm. I can have all my silverware up there. And I can I used to always have a pile of like all of our good sharp knives and stuff I would set on the sideboard to wash separately. But I don't have to. I can all that stuff can get washed because it doesn't have don't worry about things melting because it doesn't have the heating element element in the bottom it heats up the water instead so i can put all my tupperware type stuff on the bottom rack and not worry about it so i'm i'm loving my bosch i got a 500 series if you're looking that's what i went with and i'm very happy with my bosch 500 i my my convection microwave is a bosch yeah i love it the only thing i don't like about it is it doesn't have a simple method to deep like if you just want to defrost like a frozen bagel or something Mm -hmm. you can't just put defrost 20 seconds you have to like a meet me and then it and then you forget about it and then it overcooks and it's just a really simple feature but it doesn't have it but i love my bosch convection oven too so one thing before we finish up are you glad you went to the march oh i my friend what would what would you tell friday morning kelly who was nervous about getting on that plane this is going to change the way you look at the world because i was in a really dark place honestly Mm -hmm. before I left and I felt like everything around me was just negative and it was just what I needed in fact my friend at work um she's like I'm so glad you did that because it is I can tell like you're back like you're back to yourself because I just between the Marissa Kennedy case Mm -hmm. and the shootings and just everything in the winter yeah. I just had been, and I'm a, I'm an optimist. You know that. You <laughs> yes, know that. Yes. I mean, gosh, I was optimistic about everything, even Donald Trump. But I was just really like, oh my gosh, nothing good is going to ever happen again, <laughs> which is bad. Or, but now I just feel so much better, and I'm so glad I did it. It was totally worth the money, the time, the criticism that I'm getting from my family. It's totally worth it. Well, and I do it all over again, and I, I, and I'll go again if I have to. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. And mine was a local one, but I want to share it because even if you can't do the Washington marches, the local marches matter yeah. too and local participation matters too. So you should always see what you can do to help. And it always, it always, it made me feel better too, to leave and feel like, okay, yes. I don't feel so alone. Right. I'm not crazy. Right. Exactly. But anyway. All right. So we will be back next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.